The way we consume and share news today is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why we decided it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online, like a legendary comeback, for example, for a daily social media minute. We're joined by Erica. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Deja vu. What's Didn't happening? we talk about comebacks just recently? Who did we talk about? <laughs> We talked about somebody coming back. BTS is making a comeback in June. <laughs> I'm not making that up, right? I sometimes it, 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 it kind of it, it gets blurry. Yeah, <laughs> it, but it's funny to say that BTS is making a comeback. I mean, where did they go? You know, they were always here. According to Hive, uh-huh. they were on a break. Oh, well, that sounds funny, right? Not like the Friends reference. Oh my goodness, but, totally. But, <laughs> no, no, it's, yeah. it's technically they were not necessarily promoting new albums. Mm-hmm. They had a single, Butter was a single, right. and so on forth. But they're making like a fully fledged comeback with uh, an entire with a full album. Exactly. I see. Makes sense. All right. <laughs> Now that we got off that, let's turn our attention to Choi Young Pier. There is no connection there, except that, well, they're both from K pop. One's a super veteran, and the other is, I guess, a rookie compared to Choi Young Pier. Choi Young Pier said uh, during a press conference, like, what was it, four years ago, that marked his 50th anniversary oh, well, of his debut. Wow. He said that he likes BTS. Uh, did he really? Yeah, he really did. So there's a connection there after yeah. all. See, that was all very <laughs> intentional, you see? Yes. <laughs> now, the big question is, um, well, he's working on a new album yeah. right now. Uh, and the big question that everyone is asking is, is he actually really going to make a comeback <laughs> in 2022? Mm. According to the music industry, the singer recently started working on a new album. Mm. And apparently he's working on this album at full speed. Okay. Uh, a spokesperson for the singer said that he's working fast. Faster than ever, and that the goal for now is to release it within the year. Um, mm. We don't have much details <laughs> about the album itself or the tracks that he's writing, uh, but the singer is reviewing a wide range of genres mm. and concepts. From what I understand, the last time he made like a surprise comeback, uh, we were actually kind of blown away that the songs were able to kind of penetrate through the younger generation and yeah. reach out to the older fans as well. The spectrum was so wide. That's I think right. Remember Bounce? Bounce. <laughs> it got so much radio play. Really and I think that's 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 just a sentiment of, well, Choi Young Pier. It's been a while since his apparently yeah. the, that last album. Uh, nine years? Yeah. Um, 2013. So yes, nine years. Wow. Almost a decade ago uh, was his last album titled Hello. That was his 19th studio album. <sighs> so this upcoming album is going to be his 20th if it is dropped as a full length album. Mm. This year, by the way, marks uh, the 54th anniversary of Cho Young pils debut. Mm. Uh, he turned 72 years old last month. The man is going strong. The thing is, I'm surprised by so many things, like for example, 20th studio album, because I mean, yes, his career spans a great deal, yeah. but no one releases full length albums these days. It's just not the most cost effective way to right, promote, correct. but it's Cho Young after all. Yep. He's 72? He's 72 years old. Okay, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Many music lovers consider Choi Young-pyo to be the original K-pop idol. The original K-pop idol. Um, I thought he... it was on Teji. <laughs> Actually, no. Okay. Apparently not. Um, he produced South Korea's first million seller oh. with his debut album, including his 1976 hit, Come Back to Busan mm. Harbor, Dorawayo mm. uh, Busan Hangye. Uh. Uh, there's also Woman Outside the Window, Changbake. Uh, Yoja? Yeah. Yeah. Bob Hair, Tambal Mori, and Mona Lisa. Yeah. Mona Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, he actually debuted as a member of the rock band Atkins in 1968, mm-hmm. but he later performed in the bands Kim Trio and Cho Young Pil and Shadows. Cho Young Pil got before debuting as a solo artist. Mm-hmm. So he they, is referred to as the king of K-pop. I guess it makes sense looking at his career um, before we understood K-pop as we know it today. Yeah, right. Exactly. He set countless records. Of course, he was popular outside of Korea as well. In neighboring Japan, for example, he sold over a million copies of a single mm, mm. album. He has performed at the Radio City Music Hall in New York. Mm. Uh, yeah, his uh, last album, 2013, got a whole lot of love from fans across all generations. Like mm. you said, mm. uh, the album went on to win him multiple awards and trophies that year. Isn't that what dreams are made of, to be able to still produce music and get the public, not just grab their interest, but be praised for yep. it at 72? I think that's so exciting. It really is. And you really do think somebody's deserving of the title legend or king when yep. they clearly have staying power and appeals to people regardless 
regardless of, as you mentioned, their age and background. Yeah. Um, during that press conference back in 2018, uh, he said, music is just music. It becomes history with the passage of time. <laughs> Was he referring to himself as oh, history? I don't know. That but could be he, interpreted in a number of different ways. Yep. He also said that he keeps up with the times by listening to music on YouTube Every single day, so he listens to new music. Mm. And while he listens, I mean, he started out as a guitar player, after yeah. all. He still writes down all the chords Whoa. to the music. Yeah. You would think that a legend might have, I don't know, all of the sidekicks do the busy work. But I guess he still stays close to his roots. Still. It turns out, and that is a reason why he has such power and, and maybe even influence in the K-pop Correct. industry. Yep. So I get it. He likes BTS. Yeah, he, he likes, likes BTS, BTS, he said. <laughs> On to our second story, which is totally worth discussing because I did like a triple take on this. All South Korean Winter Olympics medalists. Uh, winning a medal is not enough. Apparently, they're being promised <laughs> fried chicken pension. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> I mean, the word itself, fried chicken pension. For fried chicken lovers, isn't that like the dream? Yeah. To get a lifetime supply of fri- um, free fried chicken? Limited lifetime supply of fried chicken. When you want it, you got it. Yes. So the Korea Skating Union is going to hold a ceremony later today to officially award this fried chicken pension (laughs) to uh, Beijing Olympic medalists at a hotel in downtown Seoul. I'm sure it's garnering just the same reaction from just about everyone who's involved and the fans, too, because, I mean... Look at the name, Chicken Pension. I know. <laughs> now, the so-called Chicken Pension is backed by Yoon hong mm. who is the CEO of Korea's fried chicken franchise, Genesis BBQ. Mm. And he was also the chief of South Korea's athletic mission mm. at the Beijing Olympic Games. Mm. Now, apparently, this very interesting deal mm. was struck after short track uh, speed skating medalists Hwang dae hun and Choi Min-jong mm. asked him... For the reward. They said, you know, if we win a gold medal, could we get this? No And, way. you know, Yoon said, yeah, sure. I'm definitely going to consider. I'm now considering, should I just be blurting out wishes on air just to see who's <laughs> listening and see if I can get it? I mean, reach for the stars. Right? I just, I guess, I bet you they were just mentioning it in passing, right? I, I, I mean, think so. They were, be, they were being playful, I think. Right? Because yeah. um, it's a funny interview, but who knew? They delivered. Yes. Yeah, so uh, another funny interview that uh, Hwang Leon gave after winning gold in the men's 1,500 meters and a silver in the 5,000 meter relay. He said the first thing he wanted to confirm after his win was whether that fried chicken pension he asked for was going to happen. Okay, maybe at that point it wasn't just playful anymore. <laughs> it's like, you heard us, right? Deliver. I can't decide. Is this like the greatest PR stunt ever? It, I, I think so. Because it's the thing is, I think we respond to something that's organic, yep. right? Or sometimes seemingly organic. And it's that's that's what moves people to yep. open up their wallets and uh, gear towards a certain brand. But anyhow, the brilliance of it is they asked and they got it. And you know, uh, during the Olympics, after the me- the <laughs> the athletes won a medal or medals. Yeah. There's always an interview. Yeah. And the reporters ask them because they've always been tra- they've been training so hard for yeah. the big event and uh, they really have to watch what they eat. Oh, sure. One of the questions they always ask is, so what do you want to eat when you go back home? And they all said... I want to eat so many things, and one of them <laughs> is fried chicken. They mentioned a very specific menu on the restaurant, uh, well, on the restaurant's menu, and um, yeah, the, the the company actually piggybacked mm. on the medalists' cravings because the fried chicken franchise has seen a surge in sales revenue by thirty yeah, percent. Okay, so here's the brilliance behind this. Word is out that not uh, well, all medalists, not just yeah. the gold medalists, will receive the, the fried chicken pension. Yes, exactly. All medalists <laughs> are going to receive this uh, gold chicken or bronze. reward. Mm. Yeah, but depending on the color of the medal, I mm. think some some athletes are going to receive a lifetime oh. supply of fried chicken, free fried chicken, yeah. but, um, you know, for bronze medalists, for example, right. I think there's a, a, a time limit or a deadline. <gasps> oh, that's yeah. fine. I mean, it's still free chicken for it extended is. amount of time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm wondering how much fried chicken can you eat in a lifetime? It's kind of brilliant from <laughs> that a PR perspective, too, because yeah. I was thinking, who's paying for it? But, you know, we only eat so many fried chicken meals right. a year. Yeah. I don't know. They're athletes. They might prove us wrong. Right. <laughs> On to our last story today. Now, this is most unfortunate. This, the time and age, I don't know, a quick search could have stopped this from happening. We have fact checkers at news stations. Mm-hmm. So what happened in Taiwan was one TV station had to issue an apology, a rather humiliating one, to South Korea over an improper image. Yes. Yeah, so there was this Photoshop 
image that uh, a Taipei-based uh, cable television network used last month on mm. one of its programs. And uh, the program basically reported on the COVID-19 situation here in South Korea, which was very bad at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, what, what happened was that they used, they combined the South Korean flag with a representation of the COVID-19 virus. That that that. The virus that spikes. Image. Yeah, the virus yeah. spikes. So okay. the, the image of the virus overlaps uh, with the taeguk mark oh. on the Korean flag. So oh, instead no. of the taeguk mark, we see a huge virus in virus the center in of the center. a national flag. Flag? And you have to understand why Koreans were so upset because a national flag is the most sacred thing yeah. to a nation that a na- nation can have. There must be a reason why at the Olympics yeah. we raise it high. It's supposed to, it's a symbol for a number of different reasons. Yeah. We don't mess with that. So they had to issue a rather public yeah, apology. They did. Uh, they said, we want to relay our sincerest apology to the South Korean people for the improper handling mm. of the program, uh, the problematic image. Image has been deleted since, mm. and uh, they have engaged in internal self-examination, <laughs> they said. All right, at least they were quick with their yeah. apologies. The incident apparently stemmed from an image broadcast by TVBS yeah. on March 16th that, again, like you said, combined yeah. those two images. And it's, I, I guess I understand why there was kind of an angry outcry yeah. from netizens or people online. But, I mean... Again, quick apology. Should we be moving forward? Yeah. I'm on board. Yes, me too. (laughs) Thanks, Yarka, for the coverage today. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day, Lena. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.